Hey guys, this weekend there's a six meter contest, an IARU uh, Europe six meter contest. And I thought, wow, what a great time to uh, get on and possibly make my first European six meter contact. So I built a vertical dipole for six meters. And uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, the What I do when I measure my wires is I use a tool that's on the uh, iPhone app called Antenna Tool. And I cut the wires uh, to the length. I just put in the frequency that I want to use and cut the wires and created a vertical dipole to work this weekend and possibly make some contacts here across Europe on six meters. Here's the antenna and here's how I did it. Okay, here's the, uh, here's the antenna. I've got a uh, long piece of coax coming down and then back up from a second floor window. And as you can see, got the one-to-one -one ballon, a banana clip, and the upper leg of the dipole taped to the, uh, this pole with, a, with some electrical tape down. This is speaker wire and the lower element. I just taped it at the top and bottom. This is 16 gauge speaker wire. So there it is, a little bit of a lean as the uh, coax is putting some tension on the uh, pole, but that's it. Some people ask me about this pole. This is a pole I got here. It's a six meter fishing pole, telescopic fishing pole. It wouldn't fit, this is a beach umbrella. This thing's got a little bit of wear and tear on it now. The, uh, beach umbrella holder kind of come around here so we can get the whole thing there anchor away and uh what i did is i took the bottom part of the pole off so i can get it down as you can see i can tighten it right up there with the uh little threaded tightener connection there so there it is so that's about five meters of pole and that's uh, about what 1.4 to the center so the top of that antenna is probably about five meters above the ground and there it is, my, uh, my vertical dipole for six meters here. Back away and let you get a better look at it. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of a slant to it. That's because that coax is put a little stress on it. But um, that's it. Hopefully, I can work some six meters with this. We'll give it a try. I'm probably going to operate mostly... With my uh, Zygu X5105, I made some six meter contacts back in the States with this radio. It's five watts. Um, use that mostly because, uh, I don't know, just wanted to give it some love. I've been using the FX4CR. The FX4CR is also um, five watts on six meters. So let me pull it out later and try it as well. Um, with the uh, X5105, I have an external speaker there too. So um, there it is. That's the setup, and that's what we're going to try to do and use. I'll make my first six meter uh, contact here in Europe. Hopefully, that'll happen here over the weekend. Checking SWR on this thing is not perfect. Do I want to go out there and start trimming it and making it perfect for where I'm at? Or do I just want to use the internal uh, antenna tuner? And that's one reason why I decided to go with the X5105 is because of the internal ATU. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to wing it, use the ATU. I may trim it and play with it a little bit more later, but uh, we'll try this and see if we can get on the air. Okay, after getting the antenna up, it was now just time to patiently wait for, uh, for the contest to start. This thing ran from a Saturday at uh, 1400 UTC to Sunday, 1400 UTC. And I figured what a great time. I, I would just go around the band with my two radios, both my uh, Zygu X5105 and my FX4CR and listen in and wait until I could possibly get someone. Now, if you're watching these, I'm gonna show you a couple, probably my two best QSOs um, to give you a little rundown about how the contests work. You give your call sign, uh, the serial number of the call, basically the good old five nine that everyone gives each other. Uh, and then, um, and, and maybe a true uh, statement on power there. And then, then your grid square. And so when you hear me uh, chirping off some numbers here, this is the grid square where I'm at here in Poland. Yes, Ocean, Germany, Ocean, Kilo 4, O-G-O. -O. 
QSL, QSL, you're five seven, Juliet Oscar, eight four, Lima Kilo. The name here is Walt, Whiskey Alpha, Lima Tango. Thank you so much, 73. QSL, you are 59002, Juliet Oscar, 84 Lima Kilo. Roger, Roger. Thank you, good luck. Thank you, 73. There you go. Pretty amazing uh, 5 watt QRP contacts for, for VHF for six meters. I want to give you a rundown now what the weekend was like. It was tough. I got to tell you, band conditions were never really great here where I'm at. Uh, six meters kind of opened and kind of didn't. I had to be very patient. This took a lot of patience and a lot of time. But what I did was I would, I would maybe faintly hear somebody and I would get on that frequency. And as they would operate, I could hear them coming up and then come back down. You know what I mean? It was like the signal would fade away, come back real strong, and then go back down again. So it was just being patient. On top of that, five watts, man, it was really tough because, you know, in a contest, you had people all over piling on with some power. They were just overwhelming me. So a lot of patience sitting there listening and listening until I finally got through. And, uh, and, and it was not an easy task. It was, it was tough with, with five watts. Would I recommend someone that, uh, is a QRP guy to get out and like really go for it on six meters? Probably not. I know both of my radios are only five watts on six meters, but I think, um, what those radios are probably suited better for. I know where I live at, the city I live in has a six meter repeater and I could probably hit it pretty easy with five watts, but, um, Getting out and making the kind of uh, contacts, the, the couple that you saw here, those big long distance contacts is not an easy task uh, on the six meter band uh, QRP. Maybe when the band's super open and they do call it the magic band. And I kind of think those uh, those two better uh, calls, uh, you know, QSOs that I just showed you, they're pretty magical. I mean, for, for to be VHF QSOs and to be that far away. But let me tell you, that took a lot of time, a lot of patience, a whole lot of patience. So um, what, what, what would I do? I'd recommend the antenna I built. I think it worked well. I think it proved that too as, as far as the, uh, the QSOs that I made. But I really would say that um, if you're really interested in operating six meters, go out and find a really good radio that's suited for it, you know, maybe 50 watts or something for six meters, and you probably would do better. Also, you really got to pay attention to conditions. And like I said, you got to be very, very patient. And, and that's, that's one thing I learned with this is patience is the key because I would just sit there and wait and wait and wait. One thing I did, you know, I, I knew I wasn't going to turn my log in and I wasn't going to be really contesting. I would look on the, on the cluster and, and look for the spots and I would find a frequency on the cluster where someone was at, sit there. I, I tuned to it, would hear nothing, sit there and sit there until finally I could hear rising up. You know, the band was opening up a little bit and I made those contacts and that's, that was one way to do it. Um, so it's tough. It, it was a lot of fun. It was a great experience. Hey, I've made a six meter contact. I've made a few now here in Europe and that's really what I was after this weekend. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hey, get out and experiment. That's what I'm doing. And then I'm just having fun. That was a super easy antenna to build. Just a couple of pieces of wire cut a little over 1.4 meters each and just taped to a pole with a with a banana clip and a one-to-one -one ball and, and I, I was up and running and was able to I had some fun I really did um yeah I wasn't just slaying them though all day long making contact after contact it was tough anyway I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like and subscribe until next time I'm Walt K4 OGO 73 my friends